eating only vegetables for a year, eating only McDonald's for five years. Yeah, we've talked a lot about food on this channel already, so let's keep things moving. But this time, we're putting a different spin on things. And of course, I'm calling in our favorite little Sudi. All right, Bistav, there are a couple things you need to know first, like the difference between a use-by date and a best-before date. Mm, okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you fully understood that, but hey, glad you're on board. So as you might have already guessed, today's topic is expired food, and we're gonna go through a whole list from the least risky to the most questionable foods. So what will the expired food do to Gustav's body? Will Gustav get sick? Will he vomit? Sweat? Bleed? Will he even make it to the final round? Could expired food actually kill him? Time to find out in today's big question, trying the worst expired foods, what's it like? Let's start off easy with things like sugar, honey, pasta, lentils, chocolate, and canned foods. Sorry, Gustav, this combo doesn't exactly scream mouthwatering, but we have grouped them together because they're all pretty much completely non-perishable. So honestly, the risk of issues here is super low. You might be thinking, wait, but there's an expiration date on pasta and lentils. And you would be right, but if you look very closely, it's not exactly an expiration date, but rather says best before. Yeah, that's more of a suggestion from the manufacturer than a strict rule. It's not dangerous to go past that date, which is called a minimum durability date. Things will be very different when we get to perishable foods a bit later. But for now, with these items, you can go months past the best before date. And our dear Gustav doesn't have to worry, we stored all these foods in a dry place where mold is unlikely to grow. And on top of that, the risk gets even lower once we boil the pasta, and in any case, any bacteria that might have started growing gets killed by the heat of cooking. See? No risk. Still totally edible. So at the end of the day, to avoid food waste, don't throw out your dry food just because they're a little past their best before date. There is one exception though, when the packaging is already opened or damaged. That's when you gotta be careful, like with a can that is swollen or puffed up. That's often a sign that it's been contaminated. On the flip side, on the very top of the non-perishable food list, we've got honey. It's basically a risk-free food that never expires. You can eat as much as you want, whenever you want, but warning, don't give honey to babies under the age of one year old. They aren't supposed to eat honey due to their more sensitive immune systems. Now, let's move on to our next group of foods, and this time, they're a lot more risky. All right, Gustav's expired food feast continues with dairy this time, specifically yogurt and cheese. If you take a look at a yogurt label, you'll notice the company doesn't just suggest when to eat it by. Nope, this time they strictly tell you not to go past the printed date. Depending on the item, it will literally say expiration date or use by date. So no suggestions here. And this is why we call a use by date much stricter than a best before date. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but but I've eaten yogurt past the date before and I was fine. And you're not wrong. In fact, several consumer watchdog groups, including in France, Gustave's homeland, have run tests on this. They tried yogurts that were three weeks past their expiration date, and guess what? The products were still safe to eat with no health risks. Hmm, why is this the case though? Well, probably because the milk in yogurt is pasteurized. It gets heated to a high temperature, then rapidly cooled, which kills off any harmful bacteria. Sure, after about three weeks, the taste does start to change a bit. It gets a bit more sour and a little funky, but just because something doesn't taste exactly the same doesn't mean it'll make you sick. That said, not all dairy desserts are created equal. We're not talking about pudding cups or cream-based desserts here. Anyway, here's your expired yogurt, Gustave. Bon appetit. Now, where things start to get sketchy is if the item is over a month past the use-by date. Let's not push our luck. And really, you should be cautious of any product. If a yogurt container starts bulging or seems full of air, like with cans, that's usually a bad sign. Now let's move on to a nice little raw milk cheese, aka non-pasteurized cheese. Now, this one's a bit special because it's already crawling with bacteria and mold on on purpose when you buy it. You've got things like lactic bacteria, propionic bacteria, and even non-harmful staphylococci. Basically a whole bunch of complex sounding stuff, but yeah, it's all in there. 
If you're eating a soft cheese like camembert, you're also snacking on Penicillium camemberti. And when it comes to blue cheeses like Roquefort, one of France's most iconic cheeses, you're dealing with Penicillium Roqueforti. As for Gustave, we're gonna give him a slice of a bit of a harder cheese that's very famous in France called Comté. You can already see some suspicious green spots on the rind, but the good news is with hard cheeses, you can usually scrape off the moldy parts and the rest should be safe to eat. Careful though, that method only works with hard cheeses. If it's a soft, moist, or pre-shredded cheese, you can't just scrape the mold off, the germs can spread inside, and the whole thing gets spoiled. In those cases, toss the whole thing, no exceptions. And actually, good to remember, the same thing goes for bread. If your bread gets moldy, don't just cut off the moldy part and eat the rest, because that fuzzy patch is just the tip of the fungus iceberg. Let's say the roots of the mold are often invisible and spread throughout your bread. These molds aren't always super dangerous, but still, better safe than sorry. Anyway, Gustav's stomach's a little upset right now, but he should make it out okay, more or less. Just a reminder, don't try this at home, folks. We pecked the right kind of hard cheese, stored it properly, and scraped off the moldy bits. So far, so good. But honestly, it's not worth taking chances. If there's a use-by date or expiration date, don't go months past it. A few days, or at most a week or two for yogurt, is already pushing it. All right, let's kick things up a notch. It's fish time, and this is where things start to get sketchy. Or is this where things start to get fishy? We're going with four types of fish. Sardines, mackerel, tuna, and anchovies. Yep, these ones specifically because they have a very particular trait. When these fish go bad, their muscle tissue can produce a compound called histamine, and that compound can build up in dangerous amounts if the cold chain wasn't followed properly or if the fish is eaten days after it should have been. We're now dealing with super perishable foods. It doesn't take months for these to become toxic. Just a few days can do the trick. So what exactly does this histamine molecule do? Let's find out firsthand with our friend Gustav. You see that? He's turning beet red and now his skin is itchy. He's also getting a headache and his heart's racing a bit. What we've got here is a classic allergic reaction kicking in after eating the fish. Within the hour, Gustav might even start feeling nauseous. But the good news? It usually doesn't last more than a day. What Gustav is experiencing is called histamine poisoning. But don't worry, it's extremely rare. And it doesn't happen with all types of fish either. All right, sticking with animal products, let's move on to expired meat. Now we're getting into some of the most dangerous expired foods, meat products. Things like ham, ground beef, chicken, and even eggs, since their makeup is pretty similar to meat. You've probably heard the name, even if you're not quite sure what it is, I'm talking about salmonella. This bacteria can even show up in raw milk cheeses, aka non-pasteurized cheeses. Though we didn't mention that earlier since cheese spoils a bit more slowly, so salmonella doesn't typically become an issue with cheese like it does with meat. To really get the full <laughs> salmonella experience, we're serving this out a nice slab of undercooked two-week-old chicken. This chicken is two weeks past its expiration date, and honestly, it reeks of death, and it's absolutely crawling with salmonella. In case you're wondering, salmonella are nasty little bacteria usually found in animal intestines, and sometimes you can swallow them, especially if your meat isn't cooked properly. Let's check back in on Gustav in a day or two, because the first symptoms of a salmonella infection don't hit right away. Yeah, as you might expect, our test subject is in terrible shape. Fever, vomiting, stomach cramps, diarrhea, he's having a really rough time. And just so you know, he could stay like this for nearly a week. To give you some numbers, in France, Gustave's homeland, 1.2 to 1.3 million people get infected with salmonella every year. That's about 2% of France's population. And of those people, 200 to 400 people die from it on average every year. Those who die are the most vulnerable people, the elderly, the very young, or those with weak immune systems. Sure, those numbers might not seem high, but the sad truth is that nearly all of those deaths could have been avoided pretty easily. The other dangerous bacteria found in spoiled meat is Listeria. It's a sneaky one because it doesn't change the taste or appearance of the contaminated food. If you ingest a high enough dose, you can develop listeriosis. But unlike salmonella, listeria infections are actually pretty rare. We're talking about roughly five cases per million people, so the odds are very low. What makes listeria tricky is that the symptoms take a long time to show up, sometimes up to two months after exposure. And by that point, it's hard to remember that sketchy undercooked steak you had two months before. And the 
symptoms themselves pretty generic. Diarrhea, fever, headaches. But don't let that fool you. Listeriosis can lead to serious consequences, including miscarriage. So while very few people actually get listeriosis, the people who do get it are often already vulnerable, which is why about 2% of cases end in death. By the way, I'm bringing up listeria in the meat category, but it's actually one of the few bacterias that can show up on just about anything. Fruits, vegetables, grains, meat, shellfish, you name it, it could be there. And just to wrap up the meat section, keep in mind that spoiled meat can also contain staphylococcus and a whole bunch of other nasty pathogens. So yeah, it's pretty hard to make an exhaustive list. To reduce your risk of catching any of these bugs, keep your fridge below 4 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 4 degrees Celsius. And don't forget to clean it regularly, a dirty fridge is basically a bacteria fall. Alright, now that Gustav is full of questionable meat, let's switch gears completely, it's time for expired grains. Here you go, Gustav, some nice moldy corn. Grains can grow all kinds of molds and bacteria once they're expired or stored poorly. Some of them are relatively harmless, but others, not so much. Now, we've made sure to pick a batch of corn that's infected with a particularly nasty type of black mold called Aspergillus niger. Okay, technically the mold itself isn't the problem, it's the toxins it produces that are seriously dangerous, known as aflatoxins. Sorry for all the science terms in this video, but hey, it kind of comes with the territory today. So yeah, aflatoxins are no joke. They can also contaminate wheat, rice, oil seeds like peanuts, and even spices like turmeric. Gustav seems totally chill right now, but make no mistake, acute aflatoxin poisoning can kill you just a few hours after eating it. But don't worry, I'm not a total monster, I didn't give him a massive dose, also we're not done with the video yet. Still, even in small amounts, aflatoxins are seriously dangerous and they are even carcinogenic. Yep, that's because this toxin actually damages our DNA, and more often than not, it leads to liver cancer specifically. Some countries are hit harder than others, like Kenya, where where 341 people were poisoned by aflatoxins at the same time. Out of those people, 123 died. If you're lucky enough to live in France, your risk of exposure is usually much lower. According to a 2011 study by the French Food Safety Agency, aflatoxins cause no more than five cases of liver cancer per year in Gustave's homelands. So how can you lower your risk of exposure? Well, by eating a balanced diet and a diverse amount of food. Aflatoxin poisoning is super rare, but certain imported foods can contain small traces, so it's better not to eat the same thing every single day. Spreading out your diet, spreading out the risk. Especially when you consider what aflatoxins can do to you over time. Yeah, too late for Gustav though. So now that he's doomed anyway, let's move on to expired soup. Alright, we've finally reached the last stop in our little world tour of expired foods. And here it is, a nice hearty soup that's been expired for, yeah, several months. At first glance, nothing seems wrong, and that's the scary part. This expired soup doesn't smell or taste weird at all. But give it a couple days and Gustav will start showing stroke-like symptoms. Yeah, you heard that right, stroke-like symptoms. That's exactly what happened to a woman in Sun, a region near Paris back in 2019. Doctors initially thought she was having a stroke, but they quickly discovered she was actually suffering from botulism. It's a very rare illness caused by a bacteria called Clostridium botulinum, which produces a nasty little toxin, the botulinum toxin. And yep, that toxin is the real danger here. To keep it simple, botulinum toxin is one of the most powerful neurotoxins on the planet. I might actually cover the world's worst poisons one day on this channel. In Gustav's case, the toxin developed because this soup was expired for about three weeks, but let me be clear, it's extremely, extremely rare. There are fewer than 20 cases per year, and even though it often leads to intensive care, France only sees about one to two deaths from it annually. So no, you're not guaranteed to get botulism from expired soup. In fact, the botulinum toxin can also show up in cured meats, especially artisanal ones. So essentially what's happening to Gustav here is definitely not the norm. Most of the time, eating expired food will just give you diarrhea at worst, maybe make you throw up, but I wanted to show you what the worst case scenarios actually look like. And unfortunately for poor Gustav, yeah, we're going full worst case scenario. He's exhausted, weak, 
dizzy, and little by little, his respiratory muscles and leg muscles start to shut down until he's paralyzed. Yeah, we're putting Gustav in intensive care. He needs help breathing. He should make a full recovery without permanent damage since he got medical help in time, but his recovery is gonna take a few weeks. As you've seen, figuring out what happens isn't so simple because different foods spoil at different rates. Bacteria and mold aren't always harmful, and even with something like expired cheese, it's not always the same pathogens that show up. Conclusion, it's actually really hard to know exactly when an expired food becomes dangerous. So tell me, would you rather take the risk and eat food that's technically past its expiration date, or do you prefer to follow every single expiration date to a T, even if it means wasting a ton of still edible food? Let us know in the comments.